So mapping of persistent atrial fibrillation remains a huge ongoing challenge. Firstly, because the rhythm is random, and so it's very difficult for inexperienced operators to understand where the AF may be originating from and understand and see patterns within that atrial fibrillation. And the second is because it is a very complex rhythm, it then means that the therapy is very limited to only those people that have a long experience of doing AF ablation procedures, which means that many patients don't get access to it or they get access to it very late, which means that by then the AF is fully established and very difficult to reverse. So the mapping of persistent atrial fibrillation and indeed the ablation of persistent atrial fibrillation has a number of potential ways that it could be optimized. Firstly, getting patients to therapy earlier so that the AF hasn't remodeled the atria. Secondly, combining the ablation therapy with risk reduction measures, so losing weight, alcohol, which really isn't very, done very well and many patients fail to address those issues and then get AF recurrence later on. And thirdly, to simplify the procedure itself so that more operators and physicians can apply the procedure with good outcomes so that more patients can get the treatment. So the current unmet needs specifically for mapping of atrial fibrillation is that there is no system that tells physicians where the AF is originating from. This is very difficult to do by eye and so far none of the technologies that have shown promise have delivered in real clinical trial outcomes. So my highlights for this year's Heart Rhythm Society meeting has been the opportunity to present our initial results from our star mapping system designed to try and make mapping of persistent AF easier and having simultaneous publication in JAK EP. So Rhythm AI uh, and star mapping uh, has shown an initial clinical outcome in 35 patients with 18 month follow up with amazing clinical results with 80% of patients AF and arrhythmia free after an 18 month follow up. Whether this then works in real clinical practice applied more broadly in randomized trials is yet to be determined, but this is a very exciting initial result for us.